This is a review of the FuelWorld FW279S 7-inch ultra-bright camera monitor. I'll go over this monitor from top to bottom, recommend a few useful accessories, go through the menu and buttons to show you what it can do, and let you know if the monitor is worth purchasing. I'll leave a link to it in the description below this video if you want to check it out. Let's get started. Monitor Overview This Fuel World monitor features a 7-inch display, which I find to be a great size for mounting on a camera, which helps you compose your shots better, check exposure, and nail focus. It has a 160-degree wide viewing angle. Best of all, it's ultra-bright at 2200 nits, so it can be used on a sunny day without shading. On the back of the monitor, you'll notice a Sony NPF battery plate. A single NPF battery will power the monitor. Other battery plate options are available for purchase. On the side of the monitor, you will see an up to 1080p 3G SDI N BNC connector and a 3G SDI out BNC connector. It also has an up to 4K HDMI out and HDMI in connection. I like that this monitor can handle both HDMI and SDI. It makes it future proof if I ever change cameras. On the opposite side of the monitor is a USB upgrade port for firmware updates. Below that, we have a 3.5mm headphone output. And below that, a DC 12 volt power input. You could buy a power supply for around $12 if you don't want to always have to use batteries. At the top of the monitor are eight buttons. I'll talk about these a little later. Finally, on the bottom of the unit, you'll see a mounting hole. Accessories. The first accessory I purchased was a near NPF dual battery charger that came with two NPF 970 batteries. These are the big NPF style batteries but when you're using an ultra bright monitor that uses a single battery at a time, having the extra power in multiple batteries is important. I also purchased this small rig monitor holder mount with a cold shoe connection. It's beefier than the swivel mount that comes with the monitor. Since I'm using my monitor with a camera with SDI out, I also purchased this coiled BNC to BNC cable. I like that it has two right angle connectors. Mounting. Mounting is easy. I'll place a small rig mount in my camera's cold shoe and lock it in place. Then I will screw my monitor onto the mount. Next, I'll attach a battery. Then I'll connect my SDI cable to the monitor and then to the camera. Menu, buttons, and tools. First, I'll power on the monitor by press and holding the power button for a few seconds. It's the button at the top of the monitor all the way on the right side. You'll see the Fuel World logo screen come up. You'll notice in the top right hand corner of our screen, you'll see a box that says HDMI. This is the input that we are on. I'm using SDI, so I'll change to that input by pressing the mode up button. And you'll see it switches the input to SDI. This monitor produces a very bright picture, which is definitely great for using outside. If I press the menu button, we get to a screen where we can adjust our monitor's image. If I press the down arrow button, I can change the picture mode. They have a bunch of picture modes that you can choose from. I like to manually dial in my monitor settings, so I keep it set to user. The default user settings are pretty good, Really, the only thing I needed to adjust was the brightness level to add a little bit more contrast. So to get to it, I just press the down arrow button. I can also keep pressing the down button and scroll through settings like contrast, saturation, sharpness, color temperature, and tint. To get out of the image menu screen, I could just press the menu button and then press the right arrow button to get to the next screen called settings. If I press the down arrow button, I can adjust language, aspect ratio, no signal, like what to show when the monitor is not getting a signal. It's currently set to blue screen. We also have OSD trans. All of these items labeled OSD have to do with the information displayed on top of your image, like this menu screen for example. 
OSD stands for on-screen display. OSD trans has to do with the transparency of this information. I find just leaving it set to off looks best to me. Then we have OSD horizontal, which refers to the horizontal placement of the on-screen information. Then we have OSD vertical, OSD time, backlight, power on, which I set to manual, USB upgrade for when you want to update the firmware, and reset if you ever need to do a complete reset. I'll press the menu button to get out of this screen, then press the right arrow button to get to the next menu screen called Zoom. If I tap the down button, I can adjust things like turning zoom on or off. If I press the right arrow button, I can change the zoom settings. We have zoom in four times, nine times, or 16 times. I'll turn it off. Then if I press the down arrow button, I can adjust the zoom mode. We have mode one, mode two, and off. Below that are custom zoom settings, zoom all, left right zoom and up down zoom. Below that is scan mode. We could do under scan or over scan. There's nothing more in this screen so I'll press the menu button then press the right arrow button to get to the next screen called function. This is the most powerful menu screen in my opinion because it contains a lot of useful monitoring tools. If I press the down arrow we can turn the center mark on or off. Below that is Safe Frames, a safe frame guide which you could set to 80%, 85, 90, 93, 96, 235 to 1, or off. Next we have the 9 grid. This overlay puts lines on the screen that help guide you if you want to compose your shot using the rule of thirds, where you place your subject off center on the lines or where they intersect. Below that is image freeze if you ever want to freeze an image. Next we have image flip if you ever need to flip the image on your display, like if you needed to hang the monitor upside down. OSD flip is similar, but it's for flipping the text on the screen, like this menu. Then we have anamorphic if you were using anamorphic lenses on your camera. Next we have check field. You can set it to mono, red, green, or blue. We also have histogram, which is a helpful exposure tool. You don't want your histogram too far to the right or you'll be overexposed. You don't want it too far to the left or you'll be underexposed. You want it kind of spread out in the middle for proper exposure. Next, we have false colors, which is also a good exposure tool. You'll see colors all over the screen and a chart to the right showing you the IRE values that the colors represent. The darker values are at the bottom the brighter values are at the top. If we go down, we have Focus Assist, a focusing tool. I'll show you that in a little bit. Peaking color below that, which is part of Focus Assist, with red, green, or blue options. Below that is Overexposure. You may know it as Zebra Pattern. I'll show you that shortly as well. Our exposure level is set to 91 IRE. I'll change that to 90 IRE. This is part of overexposure. Below that is embedded audio. If you turn it on, it brings up an audio meter that shows your camera's audio levels, which is very helpful. Then we have ratio marker, which can be set to 4x3, 13.9, 14.9, 16.9, 185 to 1, 235 to 1 or off. Then we have mark color for changing the color of those marks. Then mark with and modified mark. I'll press the menu button, then the right arrow button to get to the next menu screen called function or custom button settings. By the way, we have two custom function buttons on this monitor, F1 and F2. If I press the down arrow button, you can see that F1 is set to focus assist and F2 is set to center mark. If I press the right arrow button, I can adjust what the F2 function button does. The choices are center marker, 
Save Frames, Check Field, Focus Assist, Aspect Ratio, Image Flip, Image Freeze, Histogram, False Colors, Overexposure, Embedded Audio, Nine Grid, Zoom, and Anamorphic. I'll change it from Center Marker to Overexposure. I'll press the menu button three times to exit. Now I'll press the Function 1 button that we set to Focus Assist. You'll see red lines over parts of the image that are in focus, in this case on the eyes of our penguin. Focus Assist is very helpful when trying to nail focus. I'll turn it off by pressing the F1 button. Next I'll press the F2 button. This turns on overexposure. Remember we set it to 90 IRE? Now if I go to my camera and open up my f-stop, you'll see zebra patterns appear all over the brightest parts of my shot. This warns me that those parts are over 90 IRE and may be overexposed. I'll close down my f-stop until the zebra pattern goes away. Now my image looks good. It's a great exposure tool to protect your highlights. That's the menu and buttons on the monitor. If I press the power button, I can turn the monitor off. Review The FieldWorld FW279S is a very affordable monitor with a lot of valuable features. I love using it indoors and outdoors, even on a bright sunny day without shading. It helps me get sharp focus and achieve proper exposure. Are there any downsides? I would say that the plastic body is probably not going to hold up if it takes a big drop, but it's that same plastic body that keeps the monitor light, only 13.9 ounces. There are other monitors out there that feature touchscreen controls. The FW279S uses all buttons, but this was not a negative in my case. I don't like touching my monitor screen when I'm out shooting. I like to keep it clean. With the ability to take HDMI and SDI inputs and outputs, in its bright and clear display, this monitor gives you a lot of great features for very little bunny. I highly recommend it. Well, I hope that you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.